Okay, so if you have your large triangle here, ABC, what we want to add in here, excuse me, is an <coughs> interval between AB and AC that's parallel to this bottom side. Okay, so something like this, I guess, mm -hmm. like so. Okay. Now, once you've drawn this in, um, we should give it a name. Let's call it, say, PQ. Okay. In this bottom part of the shape, you can see, uh, what shape is that at the bottom, the bottom half of this? It's a trapezium. Very good. So you two parallel lines. Um, this trapezium has a pair of diagonals. Okay, so would you draw those two diagonals in? Now, this looks like one of those questions where they're like, how many triangles are there in this diagram? Oh, People with an IQ over 150 can find 18 triangles. And you're like, are you serious? Okay, now, uh, there are... No, I'm joking. <laughs> now, there's a particular pair of triangles that I'm interested in here. And I will help you see them by colouring them a little bit. So if you have some colours, you might like to do the same. These two diagonals have created a big triangle here on the right-hand side that looks like this. Uh, APC. Okay, you see that one? So it has one of the diagonals as its base. And then using the other diagonal, now I'm gonna go Christmassy, let's, let's do that. On the other diagonal, I have another triangle, okay? So I'm gonna call it uh, ABQ, like this. Okay, so you can see that overlap, right? Now the question simply is, uh, APC, AQB. What's the relationship between the two areas? What's the relationship between red and green? Huh. Now, I'm not going to tell you just yet what the property is that I'm going to um, explain to you. I just wonder if we can actually tease out the property through understanding this relationship. What does it look like? Like just on your intuition, just like, eh, I'm just guessing. Do they look, they look the same? They look pretty, because my diagram is so awesome. They, they look quite similar to each other, don't they? Okay. Now the question always is in mathematics, we, we often make guesses, right? Like in, in real mathematics, you don't have a book with questions and then answers at the back and like, oh, I should just try and work through and then I check at the back and find out, okay? In real mathematics, there's no answer at the back. You're just like, I wonder what it is. And then you apply logic and see if you can confirm for yourself whether your guess, whether your intuition was right. Okay? Now, if we think it's the same, what can we use that we've looked at this morning that can prove to us or disprove, because we might be wrong, whether they are the same or not? Any takers? Any takers? Okay, so I could think, oh, maybe there's a parallel line I'm missing. I could put one up here. I absolutely could. I'm going to suggest... Maybe I have enough parallel lines already on the diagram. Do you, do you want to suggest something? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking for some altitudes. Which altitudes are we looking for? Okay. So um, PQ here, right? From where to where would you like me to draw? You said some altitudes. Where would you like me to draw altitudes? Okay, so, by the way, can I just say, right, you know, when you learn a new topic, right, and you're like, oh, we have to learn all these new words and notation and that kind of stuff, and we talked about this, why, why do this? And the reason why is because language is powerful. If you can talk about something and articulate what's going on, that's an incredible skill to, to take on board, right? So, maybe the language that we're searching for is, like, are you talking about these lengths here? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Or are you talking, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah? yeah. Yes, that is absolutely what I meant to say. Okay, well I'm just going to run with it. Okay, if I put in these two lengths here, okay, these two intervals, do you see this sandwich between these two parallel lines, PQ and BC, right? So these two here are perpendicular, right? But because they're perpendicular and they're between the parallel lines, they're also equal to each other. Do you agree with that? But look, but look. These two triangles at the bottom that kind of overlap in this middle spot, right? They both share PQ as a base. I know it's weird to think of it as a base. You just have to kind of have to do this, right? But you can see it. It's exactly the same diagram we looked at before, just upside down, okay? So therefore I can say, how can, how can I use my notation here? Um, triangle PQB, triangle PQB must be equal to triangle Help me out. Yeah, PQC. <laughs> because, 
same base, and they're between parallel lines, so therefore they share the same perpendicular height. Okay, now how do I get from that to my red and green areas? What's the difference, say for example, between PQB, which has part of the green area, and the whole green area? What part is it missing? AP. Yeah, um, this top triangle, APQ, right? So for example, I could add APQ to this, and it would make, this is the green area. Do you agree with that, right? But of course, this is an equation. You can't just go adding things to one side because you, you like it, right? If you add something to one side, you gotta add it to the other, yeah? So let's add APQ to that side. But um, what have I done? What's this? This, this is APQ plus PQC. This is the red area, is it not, right? So what I've just shown is, here's the green one over here. This is ABQ, do you agree? And this guy on the right is APC. So like your intuition said, the green area and the red area are in fact the same, okay? That's kind of nice. So what? Okay. Right. Here's where we're going to finish. By the way, um, I guess the, the name for this property, um, and you don't need to necessarily give it a name, but it's simply that compound areas, compound areas like this guy, right, are equal to the sum of their components. That's all, right? If you can work out what the components are, you can work out what the whole thing is. And by sort of cutting this into pieces, the red and green things, you're like, how do you go about this? Well, if you, if you slice it up, you can work out what the bits are and relate them together, okay? So compound areas equal the sum of their components, okay?